The wave function is one of the greatest open questions in physics right now. So how can I possibly explain it? Well, I'm essentially going to give a high school level mathematical description with some physical intuition tied to it. Maybe you've learned that just like things we thought were waves, like light, have particular properties as in photons, things we thought were particles have wave-like properties, like electrons. If you haven't seen my video on the de Broglie wavelength first, I would recommend that you do so, because we're now going to ask, what does the wavelength actually mean? At first, you might just think that the particle is shaking up and down, and that's what's causing the waviness. But that wouldn't be correct. Instead, this is where we're going to bring in the wave function. The wave function is a function of position and time, and it completely describes a quantum system. That is to say, it captures all the information of anything you're doing. If you're looking at an electron in one dimension, there's a wave function to describe its movement over time. If you're looking at a group of particles moving around some 2D space, there's a wave function to describe that. Even some complex system in three dimensions could be described with a wave function. It would just be pretty complicated. Uh, it is this wave function that is waving when we say particles have wave-like properties. That leaves two questions. How would you actually find the wave function, and what is it actually? Well, for the first question, I'm just going to say that it's notoriously difficult to find the wave function, but it involves solving an equation called Schrodinger's equation, which you can look up and learn more about if you want. The equation is basically just a conservation of energy equation from which you can extract the wave function. For example, the version of the equation I've put up is for a single particle, but let's just leave it at that. So the other question is, what is it actually? Again, that's a difficult question, but I can say that it's very closely related to the probability density function for the system. What do I mean by that? Basically, imagine some arbitrary wave function that describes, let's say, a single particle. Well, can you see how the wave function is negative sometimes? Obviously, negative probabilities don't exist. So to convert all the outputs to positive numbers, you then take the magnitude of this function and then square it. Then you get the probability density function for that system. A quick refresher of probability density could come from looking at some continuous probability distribution. In order to find the probability, you need to find the area under this curve by integrating the function between two bounds. The same thing applies to this wave function. In order to find the probability of finding some particle between two points in one dimensional space at a specific point in time, you find the area of the curve of the magnitude of the wave function squared over that range. Okay. So uh, we can now find the probability uh, of a particle being within a certain region at a certain time, at, at least sort of. But I'm sure this video has left you with more questions than answers. This is just an introduction, so that's normal. Nonetheless, I would like to quickly address a question some of you might be having. Why do you need to take the magnitude of the wave function before squaring it? I mean, doesn't squaring always make the number positive anyways? Well, yes, squaring makes any real number positive, but the outputs of the wave function are essentially always complex numbers, the numbers with the little i's in them. So this magnitude sign is really a modulus sign that is finding the distance of the point on the complex plane to the origin. Maybe when you first learned about complex numbers, uh, you couldn't imagine them having any actual use, but there you go. They literally form the foundation of quantum mechanics. So to summarize, the most fundamental idea is that the wave function is the foundation of all of quantum mechanics. But because, according to the Copenhagen interpretation, the wave function can be converted into a probability distribution, then by finding the area under that curve, you found the probability of the particle being in that region of space. If you enjoyed that or have some questions, be sure to leave a comment and watch some of my other videos on quantum mechanics. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.